right now. I just wanted to bring up uh, uh, an announcement regarding, we're glad you're here with us right now. If you're here in person or online, welcome. Uh, so thankful for uh, those up in the nursery right now. And then our children will be having their time of children's church soon. Uh, our kids are definitely an important part of the ministry here, but um, a lot to give God praise for, and we'll be having our praise time soon, but I want to welcome again those that are here in person or online, hoping that today you sense the opportunity, as that song just reminded us, to trade our sorrows, and one way we can do that is trading them for hope. Uh, so the hope we have in Jesus and thanks to his resurrection, so much there. Wow, a lot to be grateful for. Let's begin in prayer. Father, thank you again for what we've already been able to experience in the way of the beautiful worship music that has been offered uh, unto you in this congregation as a way of engaging with you as we experience your dynamic presence due to the dynamic we are able to experience here today, whether it's in person or online. God, I pray that each person is going to feel touched and transformed when they leave today's service. We're praying these things in Christ's wonderful name. Amen. Amen. And you know, we have a lot to look forward to both now and later. Let's sing about that as the worship team continues us today. Let's all stand with this thing. I'll fly away. <laughs>
being able to offer up that music to those of you online or in person. And another thing we like to share in uh, is our praises. You know, there's a lot to be thankful for. I want to encourage you to share those online, things that we can give God uh, thanksgiving for. Good to see you on here, Esther Hogan Miller. Saw you chime in, so uh, glad to see you. Along with so many other things that we have to be thankful for, what are some of those things that you would like to share in the presence of other believers this morning? Yes, Debbie Weiss. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, uh, I can echo that. I'm sure if she was here, she'd say the same. She was telling me what a great time they had uh, there in Canal Fulton. So thanks for doing that, by the way. That was just a blessing from what I've heard. So good opportunity to get together. Women need that. Men need that. You know, we need that as believers. So thanks for sharing that. Anybody else with the praise today? Yeah, Stan. Yeah, I just want to kind of give an update on Debbie. Uh, she's uh, going to go in the hospital, hopefully this week, and try out some different medication. And I just want to Tell anybody I appreciate their prayers and I appreciate the continued prayer for her. And hopefully, with this new medication, she gets straightened out. And I also want to give praise to God for uh, today is our 29th anniversary. Oh, wow! And, uh, I know it was through Him that brought us together, and I just give Him all the praise and glory. Amen. Thank you, Stan. Wow. Wow. Amen. That's good to hear. Thanks for sharing that, Stan. Anybody else with a praise? You know, I have. Uh, All right. About a week, people. 21 steps up, 21 steps down. And my Heavenly Father is taking with me every day doing this movement. Carrying these heavy things down. I don't know how I did it. I do know how I did it. My Heavenly Father had his hand on my shoulder. I'm in this new apartment, and I tell you, it's just. I can just feel a burden off my shoulder being in this nice little apartment that my Heavenly Father shoved me into. All right. Joey Beard? Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else with the praise for that? Yeah, Jackie. Yeah. shown so I, I heard from a lot of family members that weren't able to be here but ours that saw it online and they spoke of what a blessing it was to witness those baptisms so yes thank you for sharing that who else would the praise today yeah Bree oh that's great amen did I see another yeah Margie And sometimes it's out of those kinds of experiences, emotional or whatever, you know, that God will help us. You know, when we sob before him, we mourn. There's peace on the other side of that. Thank you for bringing that up, Margie. Anybody else? Yeah, Peggy. I just want to give God praise for all these wonderful musicians up here yeah. on stage that they chose to share the talent, the talent that God gave them to serve him. And Amen. Just give them praise. We are so blessed here at the Lord. I want to echo that. Um, it's just it's great listening to you guys. It's really good to hear you back on the piano, Robert. Yes, <laughs> it is. It's a little selfish there, but I love hearing you can play. I do too. And just the combination of the way you guys work together and just how fantastic you guys all sound together Thank is you. a huge blessing. It is a blessing. It sounds so beautiful. What a, what a harmony. So, anybody else with praise? Yeah, I'm going to give one. Uh, following kind of with 
most of everybody was speaking here. Um, it's it's good to have everybody in certain I call departments of the ministry. Music being one of them. A lot of people like my wife. Music touches her more spiritually. Mm -hmm. uh, some people like the Word of God and touches them spiritually. But the fact is, there's always something that the Lord does to touch everybody spiritually, um, and it's a blessing to have your leadership, uh, the, the talent here on the stage, oh, yeah. everybody out there that is like the small steps, we've got your parents' baptism, your kids' baptism. There's these small little steps that make a church grow. And yeah. to me, that's a church. It's, yeah. it's just the fact that we're all doing something for God's glory. Um, so I get praise everybody here, um, even the people online, you know, they, those that yep. show that testimony of the Lord. It's, it's encouraging uh, to do this and grow with this. Uh, so it's a blessing to have. Yes, it is. Thank you. Robert, appreciate that. Anybody else with a praise? I praise God for uh, music as well. Uh, not only this music, but just music in general. Mm -hmm. It really uh, helps, helps me sometimes get through the week. Uh, I also want to praise God for He's starting to the process of me getting to be able to drive again. I just yeah. don't believe that it's going to happen. Uh, it's just in His time and not mine. Uh, so I, I truly believe that. Amen. That's a, we'll keep praying that way too. Thank you, Tony. Anybody else? I got a quick praise. Okay. Um, so, some of you that know me know that my son passed in 2013, and his mm -hmm. funeral was right here, actually. Uh, this place was packed for Dave's funeral. He was 16, going on 17. He had, a, he had a heart condition that we didn't know about, and he died suddenly on Friday night, May, May 10th of 2013. And, uh, you know, it was a tough time for my family. And I also have a daughter, and she's, Abby was about, yeah. Abby was about 15 when Gabe passed. And um, so Abby's, you know, she's grown up. We've helped her get through college and grad school. And uh, it's always been my prayer that she would, that she would find somebody that would love and take care of her in a way that would, you know, that she deserves, and, and so she, she met a young man about eight, well, we've known him for longer because he's a friend of the family, but uh, our nephew, but they started dating about eight months ago, and uh, he proposed to her last weekend, and now they're engaged, mm -hmm. and uh, I just praise God that she's got somebody in her life, that, and they're very godly people. Her family's a very good family, and I just praise God for somebody that I know is, when I'm long gone, she's going to be taken care of, yeah. and that's just a a weight off my shoulders, you know, so I just praise God for that, and, you know, for him coming into her life and, and all that, so. Yeah, that's a big praise. Thank, Thank you, Kevin. Anybody else? I want to bring up a few uh, announcements. Okay, we had sports, camp, yard signs made up, and we have several available. If anyone in here, you live by kids, you know kids will go by your, your house uh, during the week, and you'd be fine with it. We would love to get in your hands a yard sign, okay? I put one in ours. I put them in the churchyard. I'm trying to get them out there. If you'll see me after the service, we'll get you one. The group Uncharted Waters urges those who participate in their ministry to get kids pre-enrolled. Uh, so if you're thinking along the lines and you think you're going to be able to do it and have your children enrolled, please start thinking about filling out the information as you come in the doors in the lobby area. If you're thinking you're going to have your child in this free sports camp, uh, we encourage you to uh, list your name and contact information there. Men's group will meet this Tuesday at 6. We'll be starting Soul Detox uh, by Craig Rochelle. And I want to make a, an announcement that due to a domain name renewal issue, we've had to update our church website name. It looks the same, the website, but you need to now go to calvarywesleyan.net. .net is the only difference. But also what that means is the old email we had tied to that old domain name is also changed. It is now calvary at calvarywesleyan.net. If anyone's interested in joining our church in membership, please let me know in the next few weeks and what that might look like for you. And then if you would like, give your offering in the deposit box if you're here in person. If you prefer to go online, you can look on the back of the bulletins. There's a QR code provided for you. It will link you right up with how to set that up. Or if you want to go to our Facebook page or our new church website, you'll find uh, the link there as well. Please hand in your reports today to Lauren for the local church conference if you've not yet done so. We need to start getting that binder together for May 15th. 
which will be our local church conference on that Sunday. But prior to our local church conference, we're going to be having a carry-in meal. Perry, or, uh, Peggy Berger has more information about that. Yes, I put up a sign-up sheet in the back. We're just going to do Sloppy Joe's and the hot dogs. And there's a sign-up sheet for anybody that would bring something else. Also, at the bottom of the sheet, if you, would, if you plan on attending, and members... Everybody's invited. If you're not a member, that's fine too. Just come and yeah, join everybody. us for the meal. And then members will meet up here. But please sign the bottom of it on how many from your family so we can get an idea how many people will be here. Yes. Everyone invited to uh, May 15th to our uh, carry in meal. So um, I'm trying to get away from saying the word potluck <laughs> because I've had people approach me about that. So they're like, don't say potluck. That doesn't matter. So carry in meal, all right? If you want to come for the carry in meal, please make sure that you uh, uh, indicate that for us in the back. Okay, well, we're going to continue on today and uh, with the reading of God's Word. Please stand. Psalm 3, 16-17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For, this, for God sent not the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved.
turn to him in prayer. Prior to going to God in prayer, I do uh, want to make a mention. I just noticed, and thank you for getting the yard sign, Bob. But um, on the yard signs, uh, I'm not sure if it's all of them, and I did not catch this after she made them. Uh, but they're, they misspelled Wesleyan. So it says to look for Calvary Wesleyan on Facebook, but it's misspelled Wesleyan. So I apologize about that. We still want to get them out there. Okay, the yard signs, I think people will figure it out. Uh, but I've just uh, noticed that. So I don't know how I missed that. Um, I'm sure my wife would say how I missed it because I'm a guy, but uh, I just missed it. So um, if you will still grab one of those though and, and put them out there in your yard, um, that will help get the word out there about our sports camp. Uh, we would appreciate it. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for how you love us. And God, it's unbelievable to me that a God uh, like you, the only God that lives, the only God that rose from the dead, uh, Lord, saves uh, a sinner such as I, saves a sinner such as any of us. And so, Lord, I want to start by saying thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving each of us what we don't deserve. And Lord, I pray right now for some of those things that, I, God, I know you brought uh, to our minds, maybe uh, specifically and personally, I think of this one that my mom mentioned to me I think it was a couple days ago, Lord, one of our good friends from North Carolina uh, is fearing for the worst, but hoping for the best as she's not seen her son that's addicted to drugs for a couple months, Lord, uh, and thought that this might happen someday. And Lord, he's, he's gone off somewhere not to be found. Uh, they're looking for him, cannot find him. Lord, just a young man, 30 something, and God, uh, it's not looking good, but I pray that you, Lord, the one who can find him, will help the investigators and others find uh, wherever it is that he is located, Lord and uh, bring this mom uh, some sense of closure. Lord, I pray also, uh, Father, for us as we continue to seek new ways and uh, this changing culture to reach more people. I believe that, Lord, I think as Robert reminded us today, it's happening even one small step at a time. But Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you've been uh, bringing before our, our congregation. It, it just, God, it, it's unbelievable to me. Another thing that's unbelievable. But Lord, again, I thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace. I thank you, God, um, for uh, Debbie Berger and what she means to so many people here. I do want to lift her up to you right now and pray that, God, she will, in fact, be able to get into the hospital uh, tomorrow so that, Father, they can start the medicine that they want to, to try out uh, for her on a trial basis to see if it will help the safe fit. Lord, encourage her spirit right now, as I know she's very discouraged, Lord, and understandably so, but Lord, please bless her with your peace and your presence right now. Uh, let her know her church family is praying for her, Lord, and that we love her. Thank you, God, that uh, we can be reminded, even as uh, Margie did today, God, that when we have our meltdowns in life, or we're going through particularly rough seasons, it's on the other side of those things where we're willing to admit how much we need you, that you provide what we need. And you show us the way forward. Father, we are thankful for that. And Lord, thank you again for giving us what we don't deserve, showering your love down upon us, even though, God, it seems like we go through our dry season spiritually. You are there, you are present, and you are helping us, Lord. And we are thankful for that. And help us today as we continue in the service, Lord, to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor through every season of it or every element that we have remaining. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And who is our king today? Let's sing about that. Worship team. If you want to stand, you can. If you want to sit, you can. The only thing we ask is that you put your heart to the last song of worship. You die, bro. 
seems like there's little of it. What a reason to give him praise today and thank him for that hope. Stacy Hogan Miller, good to see you on here as well. Um, so uh, we hope that again, uh, what you're going to get from each time you uh, enter into one of these services, whether it's online or it's here in person, is you leave feeling more hopeful. Because during these days in which it seems like so many people uh, don't have as much hope as they used to. They're going in the wrong direction to try to find it. We pray that in Christ you'll be reminded of why he is the only path to true and lasting hope. So let's begin uh, before the message today with prayer. Father, thank you again for the opportunity to share uh, some of these words and uh, Lord, I, I believe uh, wisdom from others and using this voice, God, to help do that. I pray, Father, that people will leave feeling even more invigorated 
for what lies ahead. Even in this life and in the life to come, thank you for the promises we have before us on what there is that, Lord, is out there. Thank you, Jesus, that you decided to, in obedience, uh, come to this place called Earth, uh, Lord, and give us something we didn't deserve. That is your death, and then you're rising again. Thank you for doing that, even for a people that didn't deserve it. We love you, Lord, and we just want to speak about that and share that story with others. Help us to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, what specifically does knowing Jesus rose from the dead as a Christian mean for each person presently? Think about that for your own life. I mean, really, what is the difference that it makes? Or how does the fact that he came back to life affect your future status? Okay, think about what you put on Facebook. You know, some people put current status dating, current status single, current status depressed, or whatever it is. But what about your future status with God? Where is going to be your place of eternity? Those are some questions that we can have answered thanks to Christ's resurrection. Even further, how does the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God's only Son, give us hope over fears that we deal with in life? Okay, what's going on right now? There's racial tensions. I'll be speaking about that next week. Okay, what does the resurrection say about race issues? Okay, but then other issues, life after death what can we have hope for in the way of the resurrection or um, regarding uh, what's sin and what's not? How can we live above sin as far as overcoming those things which uh, might be a struggle for some? How can they have victory over that life which God doesn't want them to have? Thanks to the power of the resurrection, we can. And there's going to be some other things that we'll be looking at. Uh, still, lest we forget, I believe we find a life-changing truth in Ephesians 2, 1, and it's in verses 4 through 7 concerning this issue. And there reminds us of ultimately what this hope means for Christians. There we read, and it's provided for you on the screen, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, but... Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So thanks to what we're reading in that Bible verse and as it concerns this topic of hope today, please look with me as we move through this series and this message to you at a hope for you. I've called it a hope for you. Let's look at the following two points. Number one, when we have this hope, it provides a spiritual wake up. It's like a coffee, okay? What it does for us in the morning. I like what I see Jackie posting about coffee on Facebook all the time, and I echo that. I'll tell you what, and so does my wife. We're pretty, uh, pretty reliant at times on coffee when we first get up, but it's so important. Well, spiritually speaking, hope can be that coffee for us and give us a spiritual wake up. And then let's know that the hope we're talking about points us to the possibility of individual change. The only reason you can really have this lasting change for your life isn't because of how hard you're going to work. It's ultimately reliant on the hope you have thanks to the power of Jesus' resurrection. But first, let's talk about the hope as it is that which provides us a spiritual wake up. Thanks to the Apostle Paul in the Ephesians passage, we can understand this. For example, he says that, yes, we will be resurrected bodily at the end of time. Yet, he reminds Christians that we have already been brought back to life spiritually at the moment we believe in Christ as our risen Savior and Lord. And this is why I like to tell people, the eternity we have with God isn't something we have to wait for 
until we get to heaven. It begins the moment you receive Christ. Yes, now we can only see as in the mirror, but then we shall see him face to face. And so there is a unique blessing that we can't experience now that we'll experience when we're there seeing him in heaven. But the eternal aspect, that eternal kingdom begins when we come to a relationship with Jesus. And that's what Paul is trying to remind Christians of here. In Paul's words from our passage, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. That can begin as soon as you know him. That isn't something you have to wait for. Paul's teaching here then should also affect us practically speaking. In other words, and as Timothy Keller put it, when speaking of this topic concerning hope, this statement shows how profound the changes are when anyone becomes a Christian. It is not a matter of turning over a new leaf. You know, a lot of people think, well, I'll go to this latest self-help group and I'm going to become a new person by all the wisdom and the knowledge that I'll hear. That's not what we're talking about here. And some will say, especially in every other religion except Christianity, if I'm just a good moral person to get cleaned up, then I will experience these blessings. Isn't it a blessing that as Christians, we don't have to get cleaned up before he helps us experience change? All right? We just give our life to him and he helps us change. And that is such a blessing. So let us remember that we are united to him in the Holy Spirit. And that is ultimately the way we change. When you become a Christian, you are united with him through the Spirit's presence, the Holy Spirit, which is what provides the presence of Jesus living in you. That's how you change. Specifically, Christians are made alive spiritually, though they were dead. We're not talking about being physically dead. We're talking about the kind of dead that we refer to when Jesus was calling his disciples. And one of them said, well, let me go back and bury uh, my father or so-and-so. And he said, let the dead bury their own dead. We're talking about the spiritual dead here. So what illustrates this truth of being made alive in Christ this way? Imagine, if you will, that you're in a room full of people and you go to the podium to speak. There's a microphone there, so you lean forward a bit and you speak normally, but nobody can hear you. You know, you've been to those events. I was to one recently, don't remember where it was, um, but the person was speaking and I heard nothing because the mic was off. It's not switched on at that point, so some might say it's a dead mic. But if someone throws the switch on, the microphone is alive to you and your voice if you're the one speaking. In the same way, our spiritual resurrection makes us alive unto God. The switch has been turned on thanks to the Holy Spirit who's given us life. Put another way, before we trusted Christ with our life, and maybe someone online or here in person has it, I can talk to you about how you can be made alive through his presence. We'll do that or talk to a Christian about it. Don't put it off. But when we said yes to him, it was turned on our life so that we could become alive in him and are able to hear the truth about God thanks to his presence living in us. And let me say it like this. You know, uh, before you were a Christian, okay, you could try to do a bunch of good things and become a Christian. But without the presence of the Spirit, all of those efforts are futile. They're futile. You need Jesus to help make you alive, to help you hear further of the deeper truths of God. If you want to grow, you can't grow or go without knowing him personally. Further, this spiritual wake-up means we are, in so many words, living in heaven while on earth. Well, I love that. But I will say at this point, I believe you can have your mind so in the clouds that you forget the fact that you are living here and need to be reaching people as you do. I will say, though, if you're so focused on heaven in a good way, in which even when you're going through the downs and outers of life and the sufferings and the trials, God will help you get through it. 
or as one put it, living in the future while still being in the present. You can be like that, and God wants us to. The hymn writer Isaac Watts put it like this, the hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets before we reach the heavenly fields and walk the golden streets. That's something you can experience even now. Therefore, let us not forget of some of those heavenly gifts we can have even now. What are they? Okay, well, while we're even still on earth, Paul used the latter part of Ephesians 1 to speak of those things and remind Christians of what some of those gifts are when he said uh, that they can have joy, love, confidence, peace, comfort, and power. We find this power also points us to the faith we can have thanks to the hope of the resurrection. And ultimately, because of that faith, turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. What do you find there? We walk by faith, not by sight. As a Christian, you can have the faith that enables your eyes to be open, right? Forrest Forrest likes that song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. The way that happens is by the faith that is instilled within you as you grow as a Christian. You start seeing things differently than others see them. That's how you can have a Christian worldview. In fact, if you're still seeing things, the things that you used to see in the same way before you were a Christian, then there's a problem because once you become a Christian, you start realizing there's more than meets the eye. Whether that means you understand more now that there is a spiritual battle, there's a lot of people out there, believe it or not, who say they are Christians, but they say heaven or heaven's real, but hell's not real. And they say there are no devils or demons. There's a problem there. When you become a Christian, you realize, and the Holy Spirit helps you to see this, there is more than what you can physically see with your eyes. So because we have this hope, we have a spiritual wake up. And number two, all right, number two there, boy, I'm getting excited with this, man. Okay, it is a hope which points us to the possibility of individual change. And we have this hope because we know it's God's will that we change. In fact, once we become a Christian, the journey into Christ's likeness begins. How do you become more like Jesus? When you become a Christian and you're filled with his spirit, that's how. The Bible says in Romans 8, 29, that the purpose of God's salvation is that we be conformed to the image of his son. He does not have for us the mere purpose of, okay, become a Christian and stay a baby Christian. Don't grow. Don't become more like Jesus. Just be uh, that baby believer forever. Once you become a Christian, that's when discipleship starts. That's when you start growing. And that's God's will for you, that you conform into the likeness of his son. That's why it's God's desire that all of us as Christians are a real reflection and we are little Jesuses walking around even while on planet Earth. Still, this life change, it's not necessarily something that is easy to maintain or immediate, okay? So just because you become a Christian doesn't mean all life's woes and worldly issues become no more. Not at all. In fact, I will say, and I know it works like this for a few, that once they become a Christian, uh, they no longer have certain struggles, maybe with sins that um, they dealt with for a long time. But I think for most people, just because you become a Christian doesn't mean those past addictions or lifestyles are so easily overcome. But now you have help to overcome them. And God's desire is that you do. He will never tell you it's all right that you keep on sinning especially now that you know what is sin and what is not. But he has provided the power to help you overcome it. The same power that caused Jesus to rise from the dead after dying on the cross. That's the power you have now accessible to you to overcome and conform into the image of Jesus. We remember that fact in such places as Ephesians and Colossians, uh, where the Apostle Paul spoke of a two-stage process that will lead to permanent life change. I like the way that 
uh, Pastor Tim Keller wrote of that a two-stage process, and he referred to this change process as two strokes, putting off the old self and putting on the new self. We read in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, that very thing. It is written there, put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Speaking of this change process has two strokes, one used in eternal combustion of a car to explain it. He said that it only requires two strokes, one up and one down to complete its power cycle. The Christian can think of his or her spiritual life in the same way, two strokes, one up, one down. This putting off the old self has also been called the killing the sin stroke. I like that description, killing the sin. In reference to the Ephesians 4 passage, one notes that the things that are being killed off are the inordinate enslaving desires. In the Bible, the path we realize that enables this to happen is called repentance. There's a word we don't often hear in our circles anymore of Christianity, repentance. Don't be afraid to use that word, but I will say this, when you're in conversations with most non-believers, maybe don't use it necessarily, unless you feel like it would be effective. I would recommend that you simply say to non-believers, people who don't know Jesus yet, that God will ultimately desire for you to turn away from your sins, meaning you may have been going one direction before you became a Christian, but now that you've become one, or when you do become one, he wants you to turn to go the other way. He wants you to do a 180, okay? To totally turn your life around, and he's made it possible through the presence, his presence, through the Holy Spirit. He wants you to repent in that way. Helping to define that further, uh, we find a difference in 2 Corinthians 7.10 that is listed for us and that will help us explain what repentance is about. And it's there where we find the difference between worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. So we read in 2 Corinthians 7.10 this, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret but worldly sorrow brings death. Let me further explain it like this, okay? You might be someone caught in a porn addiction or someone caught, maybe, and I'm just gonna list some sins that maybe we don't talk about a lot. Maybe you're someone uh, that's been cheating on somebody uh, that you, you know it's your wife or your husband and you know you shouldn't be doing that. Okay, let's speak real right now. Or maybe you are, you're someone okay, that is lying or cheating on your taxes or you're doing something that you know is blatantly wrong, all right? And then you're found out. And so then what you do is you say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 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 I will change. And then you go right back to it. That is worldly sorrow, okay? That is the sorrow that doesn't bring true change. Now, godly sorrow says, I am sorry, God. I am grieved over that which I know hurts you and that which has been wrong and I've been doing it for so long, God, help me. I know that it's not the way I should live. Help me to live like that no more. And I want to do these things because I know that God is what your desire is for me. It's what you will for me to no longer live like that. It hurts you and it hurts me as a result. That's Godly sorrow, okay? The kind of uh, repentance that will bring lasting change. In other words, this stroke includes raising the mind and heart towards things above and to Jesus himself. When we speak of the stroke that is setting the heart on those things that are right, that is repenting of those things that are wrong and living in the way of that uh that God desires for you when he says to put your heart in the direction of heavenly things. You know, we see in the Bible listed as uh, treasure those things that are not of this world, but of those things that are heavenly, where moth and rust cannot destroy. 
To implement this setting the heart stroke in our lives, let us say no to anything which would distract us from God. In fact, I would urge you, when you leave this place right away, when you start thinking about things that might cause you to not grow in your relationship with God, or for that matter, for the rest of the week, as those things become uh, a part of your life, I would encourage you to say, you are not my life, only Christ is my life. You are not what I want, only Jesus is who I desire above all else. And this new spiritual life, which results from true and lasting change into Christ's likeness, is something we have hoped for thanks to the power possible as a direct result of Jesus Christ coming out of that empty tomb, which is now, I mean, an empty tomb. He came out of the tomb so we could have hope, and hope for everlasting change. Concerning this hope that now lives in us, we must remember that we have all we need to pursue a godly way of life, even while still on earth. I want to say it again. You don't have to do a bunch of good things to earn enough of righteousness before God in order for Him to further bless you. In fact, what's He say in the Bible? Your righteousness is a filthy rags. That won't get you what you need. You already have it if you're a believer, and it's called the Holy Spirit. As one Christian scholar said it, we must be convinced that in Jesus' death and resurrection, we have already earned our salvation. All right? He's already given you what you need. And that now obedience is the way to be conformed into the image of the one we love. Can I tell you that all throughout this week, I don't know why this song keeps coming to my mind. And it's a simple, older one where it says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Do you know how we do that now? Through him living in us. That's how. And that's how we become more like the image of the one we love. Our first love. Jesus. Further, while it might not be natural or always seem easy, remember that we are able to love others sacrificially in the power of the resurrection. That's how marriages last. Do you think they last by just, you know, you know, we like to get all goo goo and gaga before we uh, get married with people who say, oh, I love you. I'm so excited and we're going to get married and that love is going to be all we need. When we find that ultimately it's because we love Jesus that we're willing to keep growing in our marriage and loving our spouses more, and that's how marriages last. Finally, consider that it is fully due to his death and resurrection that we are able to live moral lives, plus carry out our mission to the world. In, in fact, remember what he said before he ascended into heaven, my presence will be with you always as you go. When you go, he is with you. Amen. Father, thank you for the promises we have from your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. And then ultimately, it's because he lives in us, if we are a Christian today, that we have hope. It isn't because of anything we could do, but all because of what you have already done and what we believed in and accepted. And because of your presence, we have everlasting hope. But Lord, I'm not ignorant of the fact that there are many, in fact, probably easily, uh, it's, it's easy to say there's a majority of our world that doesn't have that hope, and that really should bother us. So I pray that, Lord, we will do our part through prayer and through obedience to reach others for Jesus Christ and show them the love that you've already helped us to experience. And Father, continue to encourage us through this message series as we come back next week. And I'll be reminding us about how the resurrection of Jesus helps us to live out a life of love in a world full of so much racial tension. Father, help us to reach out beyond races and to remember that we're all equal thanks to the presence of Jesus and what he did for us. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Amen. So you've just said, I agree. I will go and do likewise, so go and do so today. God bless you.